Okay, so in double sideband uh, suppressed carrier modulation or DSPSC, uh, we take a high frequency cosine wave and multiply it by the message signal. Uh, sometimes it's called modulating signal, but most often I will. Uh, uh, for all the dates, please look at the D2L announcements. Okay, all the dates are there. Okay. Uh, so the modulated signal is simply the product of these two you just multiply and uh, suppose the spectrum of the message signal is capital M what is the spectrum of the modulated signal and by a theorem we established in uh, on the announcements hi guys you guys uh, really need to go over everything that is on D2L, okay? All right. Um, we learned uh, what happens in DSC is the spectrum of the message signals becomes half, but then we, if, they, the, if there is any constant, that constant goes here. And then other than that, the spectrum of the message signal gets shifted to minus FC and plus FC. Okay. Uh, now, if you look at what is actually happening in the wave, the message signal get embedded in the amplitude of the high frequency carrier. And when the message signal crosses the zero, there is a phase shift in the, uh, the carrier signal. Uh, I explain about the simplest detector, which basically uh, uses a diode to track or trace this envelope. And if you were to use a simple diode or envelope detector, we have a problem here because while the message signal goes under the horizontal axis, here it just goes here. So the whenever the message signal crosses the zero, we will have a problem with the envelope detection and or simply putting a diode and a capacitor and I'll go into that uh, that type of receiver later. Okay, so we went through this last time so I'm not going to explain too much. Here is a pictorial view. This is very important. If this is the message signal, the spectrum of the DSP signal will be uh, like I said, it's basically this spectrum halved and shifted to FC and negative XC, but don't forget to multiply by AC. All right, so there is the lower sideband and the upper sideband, which I explained last time. This is called the upper sideband and the lower sideband. And uh, uh, for and the bandwidth is B, but here you can see it goes from this point to this point. So after modulation, the bandwidth is 2B. This is this is very important information. One of the other important information is <coughs> for real signals, you, you may have learned in Fourier, uh, sorry, signals and systems, that the spectrum is symmetrical. Whatever you see here, is the same as this one. The spectrum is symmetrical about the vertical axis, which means it's exactly the same information that is contained here as here. So if you go here, that tells you we don't really need the two sidebands. One sideband is enough because all the information about the message signal is here or here. So we can actually transmit one of them. So that is where the idea of single sideband modulation comes from. But most probably we are not going to study this in the summer because this is an accelerated uh, format of the course. But you need to understand all the information of the message signal is contained either in the upper sideband or lower sideband. That should be enough. But in DSBSB, we transmit both double sideband suppressed carrier modulation. Okay. Uh, then we study a special case where we consider a single tone as the message signal. So I explained to you about this last time. So what we have is a cosine waveform of frequency FM and we multiply it by the carrier waveform of 
AC cos 2 pi FCT and we investigate what happens and it's very easy. The spectrum of this is simply two delta functions, one at FM and one at negative FM. You guys know this from the Fourier table or from signal sun system and it is this magnitude divided by two. Don't forget that. And then according to our theorem, this spectrum gets multiplied by AC and then gets shifted to plus FC and negative FC. So you get ACM over 4 here and ACM over 4 on the other side and then the same thing around negative FC. So this is called tone modulation. You have to remember the terminology. Okay, so then we talk up, talked about what happens at the receiver which is called demodulation and uh, Earlier I told you about the simplest radio receiver. In fact, I would like you guys to build one. Uh, I will I will talk about that uh, probably a little bit later, which basically uses a diode and a rectifier and a capacitor. And uh, that tracks the this envelope. But we earlier I explained if we are if your transmitted signal is DSPSP, we have a problem here because it's not exactly going to track this. Diode and capacitor will track this go up, but here the signal is actually going down. So the proper way to demodulate DSPSP signal is to use a method called synchronous detection or coherent detection. In this method, uh, remember this is the DSPSP signal. We it comes through your antenna at the receiver, okay, and then multiplied by the same carrier. So basically, this carrier is actually generated at the radio station, and they multiplied by the message signal. At your radio receiver, you have to create the same carrier and match it exactly to the frequency and in phase okay otherwise there will be some issues so we you take this and multiply by cosine 2 pi fct so you get cos square 2 pi fct so cos square x is equal to half 1 plus cos 2x so 2 pi fct become 4 pi fct when you multiply it out you get ac over 2 mt and you see this this is a multiple of the message signal so we have the message signal but unfortunately here you have ac over 2 times mt cos 4 pi fct so you know this is actually uh, the modulated signal at the frequency carrier frequency 2 2 fc so we don't want to listen to this so what so this is basically copied here so let me talk about that so in coherent detection we get the signal that is coming to your radio receiver and multiply by cosine 2 pi fct and you get this and this is what we have which is a multiple of the message signal plus message signal modulated by a carrier 2 fc now we know the spectrum of this will be around 2 fc and negative 2 fc where capital m is the uh, spectrum of the message signal. So what we have is the spectrum of the message signal here and the message signal spectrum around 2FC and minus 2FC. So you know if we put a low pass filter because remember this will be at high frequency. Let me go back here. This the modulated spectrum is around the carrier frequency so here and here. So if you put a low pass filter it, it will only let go of low frequencies audio frequencies are low compared to the carrier frequency so we will be fine so this is the structure of synchronous detection or synchronous receivers the transmitted signal comes you multiply it by uh, the, the same carrier and then send it through a low pass filter and you will get this so this will be nice this will be what exactly the message signal from the radio station so this method of detection there are two important things the 
envelope detection which i haven't shown the circuit but i wanted you to imagine the rectifier and the capacitor uh, just exactly like the way we convert ac electricity to alternating current to direct current that's exactly how the circuit looks except for the transformer part you guys know in all the adapters there is a transformer and so on um, so there are two disadvantages sorry uh, the uh, there are no two disadvantage main 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 disadvantage there is only one main disadvantage that is this frequency has to exactly match what they are transmitting at the radio station also it has to match in the frequency and phase we are now going to investigate what happens if the the frequency is slightly different for example the carrier frequency is 1000 kilohertz and you are you are local oscillator we usually refer to it as the local oscillator the local oscillator generates 1002 kilohertz what happens if it generates 1005 kilohertz this is radio station is at 1000 kilohertz what happened another investigation is it is exactly at the same frequency but there is a phase shift 30 degrees shifted this is 2 pi ft plus pi over 6 what happens then one more important difference between rectifier detection or envelope detection and coherent detection is envelope detection is cheap it's just a diode and capacitor and you have to put some amplifier but here you have to have a local oscillator and a low pass filter so this is slightly more expensive than rectifier detection so this is very interesting because when radio transmissions began for everybody like how do you call it public radio transmission uh, more than 100 years ago in united states they wanted uh, people to have uh, be able to buy very inexpensive radio receivers cheap radio receivers and they wanted everyone to enjoy you know the music or talk or whatever because of that they passed a legislation in a law it is which is still in effect everywhere in the world but i think us is probably the first one to do uh, i think it is called um, i will mention the organization they are responsible for everything that is transmitted over the year. They said radio stations cannot use DSP, SP. So you can understand why. Because they want, if someone has a cheap receiver that uses envelope detection, they must be able to demodulate the signal correctly. And that is not possible here because audio signals always cross the zero axis i explained this whenever the message signal crosses the zero axis there is a problem so even though we study dsp sp radio stations are not allowed to transmit that now when we do like our cell phones and mobile phones we cannot really say people cannot use dsp sp because there is a lot of processing going on digital sig signaling so using digital techniques you can you can change this to a digital signal that is always above the x-axis so when you are transmitting digital signals dspsc is not a problem but the law is about radio transmission like commercial public broadcast they cannot use dspsp because uh, the government was kind to ordinary people at the beginning of like more than 100 years ago nowadays the you know coherent detection is not expensive it's but this happened at the beginning like more than 100 years ago all right now so what i was trying to say is envelope detection is really really cheap coherent detection is you know you have to have an oscillator but so basically nowadays all the radio receivers we have use this method okay and it actually slightly more complicated than this we'll probably study that in in the next in the next lecture uh, okay so the first case so what we want to do is we want to investigate what happens here let me go back to this equation 
So here, this is the received signal. We multiply it by cos 2 pi FCT. But what happens when we the signal we generated here is off slightly from FC by delta FC and there is also a phase shift called phi. Let's see what happens. So we can do the math again. So this part up to here is the received signal. This is what is generated locally. And then this is not cos square. This is cos A cos B, which is half when that comes here. Then we have this plus this or this minus this. So this plus this changes it to this and the minus changes to this. And you guys, right now I am, I am not really figuring out plus and minus. But you guys should later make sure the arithmetic is correct because like I said, uh, the trigonometric, uh, trigonometric identities are extremely important like uh, cos square x is 1 plus cos 2x, half 1 plus cos 2x and then there is one for cos a cos b. Uh, I also want to give you a suggestion. Uh, most of the math in this course involves trick identity. So I have a suggestion for you. There is a formula for cos 3x. Okay, find it out from the internet. And just look at it. Cos, not cos, uh, the formula for cos 3x. Yeah, you guys know the formula for cos 2x. This is cos 3x. Okay, look at the formula. All right. So now this is too hard to analyze. So what like typically like engineers, what we do is we consider two cases. In the first case, we set one of these deviation to zero. So maybe we will see set phi zero, phi is equal to zero and observe what happens. Then we will set delta FC to zero and see what happens. So ah, by the way, uh, one more thing. So here in, remember in synchronous detection, after multiplying, we send it through a low pass filter. So here also, you have to first think of that. So when you send this through low pass filter, you see this signal is around 2 pi, 2 FC. So this will be filtered out. Low pass filter will give you this. So this is the signal you get. And here we are going to put one of them zero. So if phi fc is zero so this is zero this is your message signal it's going to get multiplied by cos 2 pi delta fct so if the difference is let's say five kilohertz instead of let us say you are listening to thousand kilohertz radio station but your local oscillator made thousand and five kilohertz so the difference is five kilohertz so basically what's happening is your message signal will be multi fluttering at a very high rate Okay, and you may even perceive this as a separate whistle. But imagine if you if your difference is uh, like uh, 10 hertz, 1000 kilohertz and the difference is only 10 hertz, then you could really feel like somebody's voice is shaking or something like that because that when a signal goes like uh, two or three times within a second that oscillation then you will feel it like a fluttering like you know very often like somebody comes to a stage and they are very nervous when they want to talk something like that okay anyway it is an oscillating signal and the frequency is the difference between the signal now on the other hand if delta fc is zero this part is zero you get cos phi and which means the message signal will be fine, but it will be attenuated by cos phi. So if, if phi is uh, 45 degrees, cosine 45 is 1 over root 2. So your signal will be attenuated by multiplied by 1 over root 2. But more seriously, if phi is 90 degrees, cos phi is 0, which means you won't get any signal. Okay. All right. 
So basically, you have to have a top-notch oscillator in the receiver. And nowadays, that's not a problem. Okay. Now, earlier when we started, I just said, okay, DSP, SP means take the message signal and multiply by <laughs> the high frequency carrier. But how are you going to multiply? So this is very important. When you build electronic circuits like with transistor, op-amp and stuff, some of you may have realized adding two signal is very easy. For example, you build an amplifier. You have an amplifier. Let us say you have one audio signal, your CD or someone is talking and you want to, you want to amplify it. You just connect it. There is a ground wire in your circuit and then another wire usually if you have a transistor that uh, if you use the common emitter configuration input will be coming to the base so plus wire of the audio signal comes to the transistor's base the negative wire is connected to the ground this is how now your circuit will amplify you can connect the output of your amplifier you design to a little speaker it will be loud what if you want to add two signals and amplify both i know nobody wants to listen to two cds at the same time or uh, but sometimes you want to give people two microphones and you want both of them to talk so if you want to do it in the lab can you can anyone tell me it's very simple to do what do you do do you have to build an adder circuit or you can just do something else. Can anyone tell me the answer? Have you guys done this in the lab? How do you add the add two signals at the input of an amplifier? Or input of something else? You have probably done it at the input of the oscilloscope. By the way, because of the pandemics, you guys didn't go to the lab, right? Have you guys seen an oscilloscope? Hello, guys. Uh, okay, okay, good, good. <laughs> Sorry. So, have you guys added two signals? Like, okay. So, the, 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 the transistor circuit, all right, so I don't want to waste too much time. So, at the input, okay, you can actually add the plus wires, add the positive wires of two signals. Okay, you can just put a knot and send it. So adding the adding two signals at the circuit is not a problem. Send the two audio signals ground to the, put a knot and send it to the ground and you can tie it. But there is a big issue. Usually they say you have to isolate it with a capacitor. Okay, because the ground's level of two circuits may be at different voltage that could create trouble. So you, you should always put a capacitor in between okay but other than that you can just tie them together and the electric signals will get added if you want to subtract it's easy you flip the one take one of the if you want to get the signal x minus y you flip the polarity of the y signal you cross the wires and connect okay so that's it so adding and subtraction is easy but multiplication is not straightforward okay in fact it is slightly difficult so to modulate i said you just take the signal and multiply but how are you going to do it in the in practically like in electronics so the idea is this is one of the rare places where nonlinear circuits becomes useful nonlinear circuits usually have a characteristic like this this is the input on the horizontal axis. This is the output. So the most famous example is a diode. You guys have learned the characteristic transfer characteristic of a diode, which, which looks like this or rectifier. Okay. So I'm going to show you the, to, I know rea in reality, the transfer characteristic of 
the diode is slightly more complicated than this. I am sure sometimes you guys even modeled it with a straight line. Okay, that's really uh, approximation. But here I am going to approximate it with something slightly better. Let us assume this curve is a parabola and that it goes through the origin. So then we can write y is equal to kx square. Okay, so imagine this is just an experiment, okay? We are not, not doing modulation. Imagine you have two signals and you add them and send it through this circuit, send it through this nonlinear circuit. The output will be given by this equation. If you expand, you get this. Can you guys see there is a product here? So now I want you to imagine this is cos x. Actually, it is cos 2 pi f x, but let, forget about 2 pi f. Cos x become cos square x, but cos square x is 1 plus cos 2 x, half of it. So the if this is, if x1 is a cosine waveform, here you have a DC waveform from that one part, plus cos 2 x, which is double the frequency. It, it happened before too. So basically, if you take 2 pi f1 t cos 2 pi f2 t, then here you have this one will be at 2 f1 frequency, this will be at 2 f2 frequency. So these two will be at a higher frequency than this because this will be f1 plus f2 and f1 minus f2. Because remember, this is cos A times cos B, which is cos A plus B and A minus. So this is two times, and so we can always filter out these two. So we have to have this understanding that we can use a filter. And I want you to remember for the next section, we are not going to talk about the filters. You have to understand by squaring, you can always get a product. This is very important. Okay, guys, and then so to do DSPSP modulation, we use nonlinear circuit. But this is the basic idea, but we are going to complicate it a little bit. So, in one of the slightly more sophisticated method, this is what we do. We consider a slightly more complicated nonlinear circuit. So it's not just uh, kx squared, there is a linear term as well. So we have a nonlinear device and it transfer characteristic is y is equal to ax plus bx squared. Okay, and then what we do is we take two such circuits. Not so from this point, there are two complications. Okay, here I just explained the basic idea why. Nonlinear circuits are helpful in generating a product. But practical nonlinear circuits don't have such simple equation. They have kx squared plus lx. That's one complication. The second complication is we're actually going to use two of them because it's a clever trick you guys will see. So we have, this is the transfer characteristic, but we have <coughs> two such circuits. To one of them, we input this signal, x1, which is carrier plus the message. For the other one, we input x2, which is... So remember, this x1 and x2 are different from this x1 and x2, okay? Don't get confused. Get the idea, forget the equation. So this is the x and this is the y. For one of these circuit, we input this. For the other, we input this. So the output from the first circuit will be A times the input plus B times the input square. For the other one, it is the same. Now we take the outputs from this nonlinear circuit and subtract and you can prove this is what happens. Okay. So basically what happens is if you look at this, this term and this term cancels when you trans, uh, subtract. This becomes two times. So 2AMT. Here, when you square uh, expand a plus b square, you get a square plus 2ab plus b square. The a square part here cancels with a square part here. b square part here cancels with the b square part here. 
the middle terms this is 2ab this is minus 2ab becomes 4ab okay that's how we got this so if you look at this the final output has the message signal plus your dspsp because the message signal is multiplied by the carrier so this time this is very important we want to eliminate the low frequency signal so we use and also we use a bandpass filter sent centered at fc okay because remember the modulated signal will be centered around fc and it will go this way and that way depending on what is the bandwidth of the message signal so we the whole circuit so is you have two nonlinear circuits and you take empty this is the message signal this is the carrier you can see x1 as the addition x2 is the subtraction sent through the nonlinear device take y1 and y2 and subtract okay and then send through a bandpass filter centered at fc and you get dspsp okay guys all right any questions so far are you guys okay okay so forget about the nonlinear circuit now i'm going to show you another way of doing it and the basic idea the modulation so you have to understand there are several different ways of generating dspsc so in the first method we use nonlinear circuits and then do some clever trick another important way is let's go here where is the modulating signal. I'm going to now show you another method. So if you look at it to generate DSPSV, we take the message signal and multiply it by the cosine waveform at the carrier frequency. If you really think about it, you don't really have to use a cosine waveform because in signals and systems and a couple of lectures ago, we realized, we learned that any periodic waveform of a particular frequency has a trigonometric Fourier series. It's actually the sum of, so for example, take uh, the triangular wave. I, you guys are doing it in the lab too. The triangular wave of frequency FC actually has, you guys actually, we proved in class, I believe it is sign or depending on the where the origin is in the signal so i will use cosine even though in our calculations it became sine because of the way i oriented relative to the vertical axis so essentially any periodic waveform of frequency f has sine or cos or both of frequency f frequency 2f frequency 3f frequency 4f and so on sometimes you will have only the even harmonics sometimes you will have only your odd harmonics but no matter what the fundamental frequency is always there so if you take a triangular waveform of frequency f it is actually the addition of several frequencies cosine waveform one of them is this one cos 2 pi fct it doesn't have to be triangular it can it could be a rectangular waveform it could be a weird shape it doesn't matter in the Fourier expansion you will see there is the fundamental frequency cosine or sine so in the next method what they do is what they came up with is why don't we multiply the message signal by a square wave of frequency fc and then filter out the higher frequencies because if you multiply this by a square waveform that is going to have frequencies at fc cosine fc maybe 2 fc 4 fc and so on maybe 3 fc 5 fc and so on but by putting a bandpass filter centered at fc you can eliminate all the others 
So that is the idea in the next circuit. But you could have asked me the following question. We can, we, we, you guys probably studied how to make a sine wave circuit. Like for example, you can use uh, one transistor and a few capacitors to make an oscillator circuit. Okay, it's a lot of fun. You guys should try on your own. But generating square waveform or rectangular waveform, for that also there is a circuit, but when you want to do high powered, like very large amplitude cos, uh, square waves, it's not going to be easy. So here, going from generating a cosine waveform to a square waveform, I am saying generate a square waveform and multiply and you are, you are thinking, you will be asking, okay, usually when it comes to big waveforms, cosine is easy. Why do you want to complicate it? Okay. Well, the answer is there is a very clever way of performing this multiplication directly with, without generating a square waveform. We can in fact generate the cosine waveform and instead of using the nonlinear circuit to multiply, we can create the effect of a square wave multiplying this using diode. So that is the clever idea in the second part. So look at this. So there is a lot of things going on. And that modulator is called the switching modulator. Okay, so basically, instead of multiplying the messages by, by a cosine wave, we are going to multiply it by uh, uh, the effect is a square, uh, a square wave is going to multiply this. So the resulting signal is going to look like this, but you have to understand the square wave is going to have cosine at Fc and maybe 2FC, 3FC. So basically modulation is happening around FC, 2FC, 4F, 3FC, 4FC. What we do is we, we filter out the other, other carrier frequencies. Okay, now, and the basic idea is this. So here I have given you the Fourier series of a waveform like this. And if you are really interested in the course, you can try to derive this equation. Otherwise, don't worry about it. I am not going to ask you to prove this or anything. But using techniques you learned in uh, signals and system, you must be able to prove that the Fourier series of this square wave uh, is square periodic wave is this okay so right now we are going to assume this is true i didn't derive it okay so the what is happening here is there is a dc term this is the fundamental term then apparently two times this is missing it is a three times and five times like i mentioned earlier okay that happens it all happens on depending on where this uh, whether, whether this is similar. I think there is a slight discrepancy. This, this I should have drawn this symmetrical about the vertical axis because cosine is symmetrical, but we are not going to derive it, so ignore it. Okay. So the signal we are multiplying by the carrier is now this. So we are going to do the analysis first. So if you mul multiply this by MT, you get MT. Mt multiply cos 2 pi fc, mt multiply by cv. So basically what happens when you, instead of multiplying cosine 2 by ct, if you multiply a, some periodic shape, periodic film, periodic waveform at fc, you generate a lot of modulation or lots of radio stations at the same time. This is the correct frequency. This is 2 fc, 3 fc and 5 fc. So for example, let us say your radio station is at 500 F, 500 kilohertz. You are actually generating another station at 1500 kilohertz. So that's not good because the government will come after you. CRTC, that's the Canadian Radio Telecommunication Commission. They, they are in charge of monitoring what the radio stations are doing. 
so they will come after you that you are interfering with another station but we can always filter out by putting a band pass filter centered at fc okay that will give you only this so this is the theory which i explain and here is the magical circuit that does it okay so switching modulator circuit there are three kinds and i'm only uh, we are going to study only one and this one is called the shunt bridge diode modulator okay so basically your message signal is here you generate cosine to pay fct but instead of using a non-linear circuit to multiply this by this you do this clever arrangement and the effect of this circuit is basically multiplying by this by this square wave this is going to happen or oh, this mathematics will be implemented okay and i am going to explain this please listen to me carefully okay so before we go further try to understand this is the message signal this is the carrier signal 2 pi fct and we are not doing anything other than there is a diode here diode here diode here diode here and this is the circuit and then this is the bandpass filter i said so i need to prove at this point before the bandpass filter the effect is multiplying mt by that square wave okay all right to understand that i want you to consider 2 pi fct and the positive swing first then the negative swing okay while the cosine 2 pi fct is on the positive swing if you look at this this will be positive with respect to this which means this diode will be conducting and this diode will be conducting so this will be connected to this so this point will be 0.6 volt above this one if you are using a rectifier uh, silicon rectifier if you are using a germanium rectifier this will be 0.2 above this or you can ignore it and say they are shorted so during the positive swing this will be connected to this point and now these two will be conducting two so this is connected to this and this is connected to this so basically now look at it this way focus here this is 0.2 above this and this is also 0.2 above this therefore a and b are at the same potential in other words during the positive swing a b is short at b a b is zero okay so what happens is you are at this point see here the short at part output is zero okay and now i am going to show you during the negative swing the diodes are not conducting so they they will just let the voltage pass through so during the negative swing this is negative with respect to this so this will not be conducting this will not be conducting this will not be conducting this will be not be conducting the effect is basically forget about this complication so whatever comes here will go here straight and go here so basically to repeat during the negative swing you can basically throw away this circuit because this is not conducting this is not conducting okay or oh, it's like an infinite resistance so if you connect point a and b with an infinite resistance uh, it is as if as there is nothing because infinite resistance is not going to allow you to go any uh, transmit any current so during the negative swing VAB will be exactly equal to M of T, which is what happened here. It tracks M, M, M of T. All right, guys. So this is how the switching modulator. So there is a theoretical part and then this practical implementation. Okay. So in uh, switching modulators, we take generate to pi FCT. You can't avoid that. Instead of using nonlinear circuit, we have this clever arrangement. okay so i already told you about this envelope detection 
so if this is the message signal i already explained at this point instead of tracking this it will flip this and this is this will go like this so since at the beginning of the radio broadcasting uh, era more than 100 years ago they wanted i think the agency in united states is called fcc federal communication fcc yeah commission something like that they said radio stations cannot transmit in dsvsp because we want the ordinary people to be able to buy cheap radio receivers and enjoy uh, music and speech and drama in those days they used to have a lot of radio drama so we need to develop so the radio stations needed to develop or the scientists engineers have to come up with another modulation technique uh, so that's what the next technique which is called am large carrier but before that you have to understand in mobile communication your cell phone what they use is a more complicated form of amplitude modulation. It's called quadrature amplitude modulation, qua. Okay, quadrature amplitude. So in this method, you take the message signal and use a cosine wave form to modulate, also a sine wave form to modulate. That's why it is called. So the you have to use, you guys know sine is shifted from cosine by pi over 2 so you can get a nice a vertical and horizontal axis and it gets slightly more complicated and we are not going to study this okay so anyway so what you need to understand is your mobile phone does not use dsvsv or it doesn't use am large carrier it uses something called qualm okay but now we are going to and if you uh, do a master's degree and your concentration is in communication you will study this right okay so uh, before we go further to prepare for am large carrier i have to explain you certain things please these are actually the review from signals and system or a course on circuits what is important i am just going to summarize what is important you can read that when you have time uh, you prove that the RMS value of this is A over root 2. You may remember this. But we define the RMS value so that the square gives us the power. So basically, this is the formula that is important for this course. Anytime you have A cos or A sin, the power is A square over 2. So this is very important. You need to memorize this. The power of a cosine signal or sine signal is amplitude square divided by 2 it comes from this rms value and that you guys proved in signals and system or circuit theory okay now there is a, another theorem you may have learned in signals and system that is anytime you have signals of different frequency you can add the powers so this is dc term the power of the dc is just squared and then for this one it is a1 square over 2 for this it is a2 square over 2 so you can do this as long as these two numbers are different another important thing is suppose the numbers are the same but this is cosine and this is sine again you can do this and the basic reason is Whenever F1 is different from F2, the signals are orthogonal. We did that in the first lecture. Like if you multiply and integrate over the period, they will become zero. So whenever signals are orthogonal, you can add the power like this. Okay. But in any case, please remember this formula. You will be using this again and again. Okay. Um, this is, uh, I think... You guys will be doing some of this in your signals and system course. Sorry, your tutorials. Some of you already did this. So there is a rectangular uh, waveform. I mean, rectangular pulse. 
you need to find the uh, spectrum at a particular value. So I explained some of this the other day. So final answer is this. The only difference is now you have to plug in the numbers. The reason this is maybe important is I want you to know how to calculate it because sometimes I may ask for numerical answers in your exam. So instead of asking find the Fourier transform of this, I may say find the Fourier transform at or spectrum at 1.5. So this is your answer. Then you have to plug in. And when you do this calculation, uh, most calculators or Google may not recognize sync. So you have to go sign x over x. By the way, a very important clue. Uh, MATLAB will recognize sync. So in MATLAB, you can type sine 10.5 pi, but it will give you the wrong answer because there is a second definition of sync function and MATLAB uses that. Okay. So please don't use MATLAB to calculate this. Directly type sine over x. To do this, you can use MATLAB or you can use Google. Okay. And if you are using your calculator, make sure to put this in radian. I think the safest method is to just go to Google. So Google will give Google gave me these values. Okay, sign this over this, you will get this. Okay, it, this is very important. Don't type sync this in MATLAB. If you are using MATLAB, type sign x over x. All right, this is inverse Fourier transform, and they want the area, and you can follow this later on. Just go through this. What is so different here? Oh, the, again, this is inverse Fourier transform. What is what is here? This is forward. Oh no, this is also inverse Fourier transform. Inverse Fourier transform. Okay, so here this is an important difference. The time domain signal is a rectangular pulse that is shifted this way. I think I explained this last time. Yes, this is the answer. But I here I am explaining plugging in the values okay that's it that's the only difference okay so here is a um, this question uh, I will come back to this maybe just before the exam and go through this but I think your TA will explain this this week okay so the message signal is a rectangular pulse it is used to DSP modulate this carrier. So you can see the carrier frequency is 10 to the 5. Denote the modulated carrier time domain signal by phi of t. Let the spectrum of the modulated carrier denoted by phi of f. So you guys are first have to calculate this and then find phi at 10 to the 5 plus 1.7. So the first step I did this like before I calculated the Fourier transform of the message signal, which is we have done three or four examples like that. And then the spectrum of the DSP SP signal is half of the message signals Fourier transform at FC and negative FC. Before we write that, we have to make sure what is A sub C. And A sub C in this case is one. Okay, so there is we don't have to worry about that is this. So we know MF and we have to calculate these things. So if MF is sync, then I, this is sync F plus FC. This is F minus FC. Now for I know FC is, I left FC and for F, I am writing what I have here, which is 10 to the 5, which is FC plus 1.0. Remember, this is FC. So I went and put FC plus 1.5 here for F. So here the FC cancels and you get this. Here it becomes 2 FC. Now you can calculate this, but the important thing here is you don't really have to worry about this because sync become approaches zero when F grows. So basically this term will be negligible compared to this. So I just calculated this and got the answer. 
okay if you guys are interested you can go type this one also and see how small this is compared to this all right so that's the this is the most important thing i wanted to explain okay huh so um I'm going to go only about another half an hour so let's just continue and I'm going to take the next okay are you guys again okay so far hello guys does everything make sense can I continue okay so now we are coming to this AM large carrier, okay? So the motivation for this is so people can buy cheap radio receivers and envelope detection does not create any problem when the message signal crosses the zero axis. So how is AM large carrier modulation done? In this method, what we do is we just multiply message signal by cos 2 pi FCT, but plus add a big carrier. So AC will be usually a little bit larger than the peak amplitude of M of T. So this is the formula for large carrier. Please compare this with DSPSB. Okay. In DSPSB, we had M of T time AC cos 2 pi FCT. Here we have this. There is no AC here we have AC cos 2 pi FT added to this. So if we factor this out, you see this. Okay. Now if you look at the Fourier transform of this, uh, this one, MT cos 2 pi FCT gives you half of the spectrum of the message signal shifted to FC and negative FC. And this is just a simple cosine waveform and the Fourier transform of that is two delta functions at half the amplitude of this remember cost becomes half half spike here and half spike here and ac over 2 at negative fc and 2 pi fc so the spectrum of the am large carrier basically takes this half cis and puts this in negative fc and plus fc but it also has a component in the middle the carrier signal so here the carrier signal is present in the transmitted signal. Other than that, everything else is the same. There is a lower side band, upper side band. And if the message signal has bandwidth B, you have bandwidth 2B here. Okay. All right. <coughs> now, the important difference is the envelope detection let, let us see if the envelope detection is going to work in this case because I told you the main reason people came up with this scheme is to make envelope detection possible by just multiplying and then adding the carrier with the amplitude but right now we are going to find out if a sub c is smaller than the peak value of the message signal that's not good. If it is above that, then envelope detection is possible. So I am going to explain that using three cases. In the first, so we first define what is M peak, M sub peak. That is the maximum value of the absolute value of MT. Basically, it means if the posit in the positive swing, if the message signal reaches five, if five is the highest value, MP is five. But you should also check the negative. Let us say in the negative swing it reaches negative 7, then the MP is going to be 7. So you have to check which is the highest, okay? Because this is the maximum of the absolute value. <coughs> okay. First case, suppose AC is bigger than MP. So here, if you look at it, MP is 1 here. This is the message signal. MP is 1. And AC is slightly bigger than 1. This is the carrier signal. Okay. And when you multiply, you see from the picture, it didn't really cross the zero axis. Everything is above the axis. So it, it is going to envelope detection is going to track this curve. 
and that is exactly like your this is exactly like the waveform you see there the black curve so no problem so let's see the so in this case envelope detection is possible see it is in the diagram envelope detection is possible now when ac is exactly integral to mp the situation we have is this this is envelope detection is still possible okay because we didn't screw it up by crossing now if ac is smaller than mp okay so here this is one mp is one a sub c is like about 0.75 and then that fluctuation <coughs> that crossover <coughs> flipping of the phase shift of the carrier signal is happening when it crosses zero okay so when ac is smaller than mp envelope detection is not possible so what crtc and fcc says is there is a law when radio stations transmit am stations transmit their signals they have to make sure a sub c is bigger than peak value of their audio signal in fact there is the the law is a little bit stricter but we will they they, they say something like ac has to be 1.5 times more than <coughs> mp or something like that but let's not get into that okay now we have understood this line so actually the the law is about the modulation index so modulation index for am large carrier is defined as peak value of the message signal divided by a sub c and we earlier we said for envelope detection ac has to be bigger than this that translates to this condition synchronous detection sorry uh, <coughs> for envelope detection mu has to be less than one you can you, you see this mp over ac for envelope detection ac has to be bigger than mt that means mu is less than one if mu is bigger than one only synchronous detection is possible okay all right but the law says mu has to be bigger than sorry less than one for radio stations okay now we are going to do some calculation for tone modulation <coughs> so the message signal is a single sinusoid and in this case mu or mp over ac become am over ac because mp is am because you have only one tone and its magnitude is cosine waveform of amplitude am that means the peak values am please try to understand here okay things are getting slightly complicated am over ac and then the am signal is AM large carrier signal is A sub C cos 2 pi F C T carrier plus then you guys know it's take the message signal and multiply by the cosine waveform. Very simple. Where is that? M of T times. Okay. See. MT time cosine and AC at the carrier frequency. So. Okay. Tone modulation. So now we look at the spectrum for AM large carrier. So I know some people get obsessed with this so many delta functions. It's actually better if you just look at the diagram. Okay. I'm not saying you shouldn't understand this. First try to understand the diagram. So the message signal is now a cosine waveform of frequency FM. Amplitude is AM. So the spectrum is AM over to here and AM over to here, FM and FM. So first thing that happens is this becomes half. So it becomes AM over for AM over for AM over AM over. And then you guys realized earlier, uh, sorry, even you can go from here. So we dealt with the spectrum of this AM over to here, AM over to 
but then we you have to deal with the spectrum of this and the spectrum of this is ac over 2 here and ac over 2 here so all you have to understand is the Fourier transform of cosine is an amplitude of half here and amplitude of half here. So if it is AC cos 2 pi of CT, it is AC over 2 here, AC over 2 here. Modulation halves <coughs> the message signals amplitude. So this becomes M over 4, over 4. And also it shifts to FC and negative FC. So this diagram and the previous diagram is very important. Okay. Now, you guys realize that what we did here is the whole purpose of the AM large carrier is to make envelope detection possible. But all the information about the message signal is contained in the sidebands. So this AC over 2 is just a waste of energy as far as information transmission is concerned. But why are we doing this? Because we want to make envelope detection possible. But we want to get an idea of how much power we are wasting this in this just to make envelope detection possible. So we have a concept called modulation efficiency. And the modulation efficiency is defined as useful power over total power. In other words, the sideband power, PS is the sideband power and PC is the carrier power. Okay, so we are basically going to do this calculation only for tone modulation. So we can calculate the efficiency using this power and this power, but they are exactly the same. So we will only use this because efficiency is a ratio. So whether we use both or only this, we are going to get the same answer. So here, if you look at this, the trans, the message information is here and here, and the trans, this, this is wasted. So PS comes from this and this, and PC comes from this. So let's do a simple calculation. So, remember I earlier said the power of a sinusoid signal is the amplitude square divided by 2. So, in this formula, we are still on tone modulation. We are going to sub in this number. So, PC will be this number square divided by 2. PS will be this number divided squared divided by 2 but multiplied by 2 times because here and here. So let's see if that's what we did. Yes, PC is AC over 2 square over 2. I am just using this formula. PS is 2 times AM over 4 square divided by 2. Everything will make sense when you look at the diagram. So I can go plug this in into this equation to calculate eta. Or the modulation power and C. But then I also remember the definition of modulation index, which is mu is AM over AC. So after substituting this here, I, I can also use this to simplify and get this result. Okay, I suggest you guys do this algebra at home. Plug these two things into this one and then make this substitution. Once you do this, all the AM will cancel and you will get the answer as mu square over. So the modulation efficiency for AM large carrier for the tone modulation case is mu square, mu square over 2 plus mu square. Now you can now check, do some calculus by differentiating and uh, sketching this. When is this maximum? And you, it, it turns out this expression is maximum when mu is 1. And at that point, the maximum efficiency is only one third. Okay, so basically with AM large carrier, we make envelope detection possible for audio signals, but we pay a big price. Basically, it tells you that we are wasting about 66% of the energy because 
that part of the carrier signal, that energy in the carrier signal does not transmit information. It is just sitting there like I don't care, like this part, okay? Because the information is contained here and here. All right. So these formulas are very important. Please remember this. And then how to calculate these powers. For example, if you have two, we are transmitting two cosine waveforms, then there will be additional side bands here. Okay. Like one here and one here, one here and one here. All right. Okay, now earlier we talked about how we generate DSPSP signal. There were two techniques. One is uh, nonlinear circuits, the square and A plus B square, and the other one is uh, using diodes. The diodes in the bridge configuration has the same effect as multiplying the message signal by a square waveform, and then we do some filtering. Now we are going to find there is, you may think to generate AM large carrier, you can do a DSPSP and add the carrier. Right? Yeah, there is nothing wrong with that. But there is another method where, okay, but to do, remember, to do DSPSP, you need either a nonlinear circuit or the diode switching modulator. So this is complicated if you want to do this first and then at this. But this switching idea that we looked at earlier can be modified to generate this or both at the same time. In other words, we can directly go here using some diode configuration. And that is what is here. Okay, so I'm going to explain this. So to generate AM large carrier signal, what they do is they take the carrier signal, cosine waveform is generated, and then we subtract the message signal from that. I think even if you add, it's not going to really make any difference, but let's consider subtraction. See here how the polarities are different. And then you have a diode and a la resistor, and then it goes through a bandpass filter centered at FC. So here you should get a large carrier. Let's see what happens. Let me try to explain this to you. So to understand this, I want you to consider two cases where in the first case, the cosine signal here is above the peak value of M of T. Okay, this, this part and then the rest okay so we will analyze what happens when the cosine signal exceeds the peak value of the message signal what happens during this part okay so if you look at this let's try to figure out if remember this is subtracting from this so this is opposing this when this exceeds this this point will become positive relative to this because otherwise it won't be positive it will be negative because this is bigger right so when this guy is stronger than him this will be positive with respect to this so the diode will conduct okay so let's see <coughs> so when the diode conducts during this part okay and from here to here, the diode will not conduct. Because for the diode to conduct, this has to exceed this. So, basically, this circuit has the effect of switching this on and off. Or multi... You get exactly... If you look at here, you get the addition of these two, okay? And then you get an effect of switching on and off. So you have the addition of this, but then switching on and off is actually the Fourier transform of this is that there is F3F and so on. 
So basically, we have added and then we are switching on and off, switching on and off Fourier transform is this. We encountered this before. So if you expand it, basically you get, we wanted this part and there is this unwanted part and we wanted empty. So we have this unwanted part, but then we have the carrier, then we have empty time this, and then we have things at 3FC and 5FC and so on that can be filtered out by this bandpass filter centered at FC. Okay, so the bandpass filter only will pass this term and this term. This is too low and the other ones are too high. Okay. All right, guys. So let's see. Okay, so I am this one. So if you if you want, you can try building this at home. The simplest simplest envelope detector. This is called the crystal radio. So you don't need a battery. The energy that is coming from your radio station to your home is sufficient. Okay, the only problem is your usual uh, uh, earphones that you use your, with your mobile phones won't work. You need something called high impedance headphones because there is very little current coming here and your earphones won't work with that. And these earphones, you can get it from this old rotary black those telephones. Uh, that make horrible sound like ring the rotary phone headphones or you can order one from Amazon or eBay okay and you have to type high impedance earphones that's the name okay could probably buy one for like six or seven dollars other than that you need a ceramic capacitor which is like micro I think what you will probably need something at picofarad range, like 10 picofarad. It's not critical. You need a germanium diode because if you put a silicon diode, there isn't enough current to pass exceed that 0.7 or 0.6 voltage. You need a germanium diode. And then you buy 16 gauge copper wire and wrap it around an empty toilet roll. You have to do a lot of, you probably have to do two layers from end to end, okay? And then attach, take one of the, one end of that wire and let it like two meter, this will be the antenna. So your transmitted signal comes here, get detected and I explained you this just like the, what happened with the, your AC to DC conversion. So whenever this voltage, the voltage here exceeds the capacitor voltage the capacitor will charge and then this the voltage arriving at is less than the capacitor voltage so the capacitor will discharge through your earphone okay so it it traces the peaks okay so the envelope detection this is the simplest one uh, if you really want to build a good uh, uh, good receiver you have to filter out the dc component from there but you don't really hear that so it's not a big deal okay so what is this oh by the way so this is the most important thing we talked about synchronous detection for dspsp you realize it works for AM large carrier too. So this is the transmitted signal. We multiplied by 2FC. So here what happens is exactly like in DSPSP, but you have an additional cos square 2FCT. So basically the Fourier uh, the spectrum of this will be at two times this frequency from the formula cos square x is 1 plus cos 2x. So, and this one will have 1 plus cos square cos 2x and that one part will give you empty. So you have to send it through a low pass filter 
and you will get the message signal empty so please try to do the this this trick identity part on your own and sometimes when you you to get rid of the high frequencies you can just put a capacitor to block after using a low pass filter to get rid of all of this the dc term can be used by blocked by using a capacitor that's it okay and I didn't draw a diagram. If you want, you can draw a diagram. Okay, so let's see what else is here. Okay. <clears throat> All right, guys. So this is a concept called frequency mixing. But I'll go over, go over this uh, frequency mixing concept in the next lecture. Right now, let's finish it with this uh, past exam question. <coughs> the bandwidth of the AM modulated signal depends on the modulation index. That's false because the bandwidth is always 2B. Whether it is DSPSP or AM large carrier, you guys notice the bandwidth is 2 capital B and B is the uh, <coughs> bandwidth of the message signal. Okay. So now look at this question. The AM modulated signal is given by this. What is the power situated at this point, this frequency as a fraction of the total transmitted power? So if you look at this, you see 10 this plus this times this. So this is AM large carrier, but there are two tones. See here, AC cos 2 pi FCT plus two message frequencies. So the spectrum is, yeah, so I, I wrote it like that. I wrote 10 times this first, and then this plus this times this here. So if you look at this, I have only shown one. The Fourier spectrum of this is 10 over 2 here at FC and ne at negative FC you have the same thing. And then the message signals, if you look at the previous diagram, this number becomes divided by 4 because the Fourier transform of cosine introduces half and modulation introduces another half. So this is 4 divided by 4, 4 divided by 4, the same thing here. Now, we want to calculate the power situated at FC plus FM1 as a fraction of the total transmitted power. So, we look at this power and then divide by the whole power. So, the power sit at situated at here is 4 over 4 squared divided by 2, but I didn't write the divided by 2 because we are going to do it everywhere all of the powers are we are going to divide by 2 and the total power is 10 over 2 square divided by 2 plus 2 times because there is this one and this one 4 over 4 square divided by 2 4 over 4 divided by 2 and i didn't write that division so this is the solution and our ta anita will also explain this in class okay and uh, the final question i want to transmit the message signal empty by generating dsp sp modulated signal at the carrier frequency fc so far i have managed to produce the signal this square which of the following do i need to complete the dsp sp generation so i want dsp sp which is basically the product of this but what I generated is this plus this square. So to answer this question, I expanded this. I get m square 2ab, which is 6mt, this plus this square. So that is m square. And then what I did is I expanded this, which give me a signal at. Oh, I need to move this to see that. I use the trigger and then it change it to 4 pi FCT. Remember, this is cos square x is 1 plus cos 2x. 
So if you look at this, the DSP signal is here. There is a low frequency signal and a high frequency signal. The spectrum of this will be around 2FC. My signal, but I want it is around FC and this is a low frequency signal. So I need a <coughs> band pass filter centered at FC to isolate this. Okay, the answer is a band pass filter because that will get rid of the low frequency signal and the signal higher than FC. So the answer is the band pass filter. Okay, guys. All right. So, uh, in fact, this is the end of AM. So in the next lecture, I will decide, I have to, sorry, AM large carrier. I have to teach, I will probably teach you guys uh, sing, uh, superhedrodyne receivers. What it means is uh, um, oh, like almost all the radio receivers we have nowadays. Actually, it started in the 40s or 30s. They don't really receive the signal uh, using this simple technique of envelope detection nor do they use the synchronous detection directly okay it is slightly more complicated only slightly more complicated we have to talk about that and then i will see what i want to do and for the exam i am trying to limit everything to am and not involve uh, frequency modulation okay